for years, you know, uh, my story, I grew up in church. I was a boy preacher, got called at nine, preached my first term, my first sermon when I was 10 years old. Wow. And uh, uh, so I grew up in church and uh, I was I was kind of uh, confused in my early uh, adulthood because I studied in the word of God. and I could see stuff in the Bible, but I couldn't see it in the lives of people. I could see victory all in the Bible, but but I, I didn't see much victory. And it, is, it was because my thinking had to be transformed. The Bible says if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you'll be filled. Right. So I was hungry for answers. I needed answers. And, uh, um, and so he will always fill you to the level of your hunger and thirst. Yes. And, and so I, I had some things in my mind that I, that I had picked up along the way that were erroneous. I thought the will of God automatically came to pass because that's what I heard. Whatever the Lord wants to do, he'll do anyway. Well, it sounds good. But it's not scriptural. Wow. Now you're about to get quiet on that. Here I got quiet on no. here's, it, here's, here's it. Is it the will of God for everybody to be saved? Yes, it is. Will everybody be saved? No. So the will of God could not be automatic. The will of God comes to pass relative to how we use our faith. People don't get saved because they don't because they will not do what is required to receive the salvation that's freely given. Well, that, that, that goes throughout Scripture. You get saved by faith. You get healed by faith. You get delivered by faith. You have peace by faith. Everything hinges on faith. And once I understood how to use my faith, my whole life in Christ changed. I'm not going to say nothing. You just, you just talk. No, this is your... You can hold <laughs> Right now, it's my time to be replenished because faith and, and what you taught me and faith has gotten me this far. Amen. Now, with the surgery and the cancer uh, prognosis, uh, diagnosis yeah, yeah. and all that stuff, it is about faith now that's, that's going to it. get me to the point of total and complete healing. That's right. I could concentrate on the Maha. God help me. I could concentrate on the report of the, of the doctor. I could concentrate. Mm -hmm. I'm the part of the enemy. No. I could. And, 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 and there's a part of me, mm -hmm. there's part of me mm -hmm. that would revert back to it and feel some comfort yeah, yeah, in the yeah. sympathy that would come from it. Uh -huh. But that's not who God called me to be. That's right. I, 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 I had one of my daughters in the faith. She went to the doctor and she came back with a negative report. And the report was that she had only a few, few months to live. And uh, she said, the doctor said, I need a miracle. I said, okay. She said, you said, okay, isn't that what we believe? We believe in miracles. Our God performs miracles. Yes, so it's no shock that we need one. If we need one, that's what we get. Hallelujah. Watch this. I said, the criteria for you believing cannot be the doctor's report. Mm -hmm. Now, we want a good report. But if I don't get a good report, it doesn't change the word. My God. My God. And it's the word that we stand on. Yes. Yeah. Now, I told her, I said, you have to deal with your head now. Because yeah. in your head, yeah. you know, the devil's used to fiery darts and that sort of thing. And, and why me? Why I've done all this? I, I said, listen, it's like this. You have to take authority over the thoughts. And you do that with your mouth. <laughs> Death and life is in the... Come on, everybody know what the power talk, but you got to do it. You yeah. follow me? And so I told her, I said, uh, you know, uh, there are some fights we'd rather not have. There are some fights we would rather not go through. But bless God, if we have to go through them, mm -hmm. thank God we know how to fight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We know how to fight. Yes, sir. And so, uh, well, praise the Lord. She did get a miracle. I have to tell that about the story. Yes, sir. She got a miracle, and she's still alive. They, and they told her, you will fully recover. See, eventually... The report lines up with the word. My son. My son. There's a difference. There's a difference between facts and truth. Yes, sir. Truth is the word, John 17, 17. Yes. Facts is what they see right now. So the fact can be they see a spot. Mm -hmm. They can see something on the x-ray. That's a fact. Truth is, by his stripes, I am here. If I hold on to the truth. The truth will change the fact. They'll go back and take another x-ray, another biopsy, and the whole thing will change. The criteria, the criteria for what I believe must not be based on any other report than this. 
Yes, and you can't get shaken. You can't get shaken by the, 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 the doctor's report. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, they're going to do all they're doing, but you got another doctor working on your case. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just, just really, honestly, take your time and teach me, us, the world, two billion people watching. Teach us faith because everything that you have came from your faith you took me on a walk that i will never forget <laughs> you took me on a journey that really made me under because i was one who preached hard against people like you <laughs> i'm gonna tell on, on on international tv put the camera right here <laughs> i was one who preached hard against folk like you until i sat with you doggone it, excuse my language, uh -huh. until I sat with you and it changed the whole concept of how I see ministry and the need for us to be able to minister and be free from the burden in order to do so. Well, you know, I, uh, you know, um, I understand people just don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so I have a great appreciation for the whole body of Christ. Uh, I grew up as a boy preacher, I told you, so I preached in all kinds of churches. I mean, I preached in all kinds. So I grew up with an appreciation, not just for the denomination I grew up in, which was the Baptist denomination. Mm -hmm. I grew up with an appreciation for the whole body of Christ. Yeah. God didn't give it all to any one group. We all need each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so um, when I started teaching faith, because God gave me an assignment, he gave me an assignment that that's what my assignment is, to teach faith. And, and I know that if I can sit down with you and I can show you what I'm doing is scriptural, if you have an appreciation for the word, you got to say, mm, I got to think about this because and then uh, you will see uh, it's not difficult to do. God made this thing simple so everybody could do it. Got it. And uh, uh, the, the key is and in everything I've done, everything you've done, Donnie, and, and I, I share this with you, too, now is 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 the strength to obey God, yeah. the strength. And that's what I've been hearing. I came in and I heard, you know, uh, uh, for you and Fred talking and it was about the strength. Mm -hmm. Well, we we get that strength by faith. Yeah. Yeah. And the strength is the fortitude to do what I know to do. We're not talking about physical strength, lifting things. We're talking about this spiritual divine strength. And, and it comes from the creator. Because remember, he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. His might. It's, it's, see, it's not ours. It's not our. It's his. We're, we're leaning on him. You follow me? It changes our character. There's a boldness that comes. There's a boldness that comes when you understand, I'm not in this fight by myself. I'm not in this fight on my own strength. I got strength from another world. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thirdly, not only that, but th this, this, this strength that comes, uh, it, 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 it's a matter of, let me, let me just go and cut through the chase. Cut, cut, it, cut. It's this strength, because in every situation, I've been through some situations. You got it? I've been through some difficult fights. Yeah. I've watched God come through every time. Number one, it's a matter of alignment. Somebody needs this tonight. Yes, sir. Yeah. Alignment. Now, what I mean by alignment, Jesus was in a weak moment. Now, people are Jesus weak? Yes. In the garden there, yeah, in Luke yeah. 22, it, it, the Bible says, and he says, let the cup pass. Wait, wait a minute, Jesus. Cup can't pass. You came here to die. If the cup pass, we all lost. Oh. Yeah. Then he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine oh. be done. Watch this. Now, once he says that, the Bible says, in the next scripture, verse 43 in Luke 22, then an angel appeared from heaven, strengthening him. Once he aligned himself with the will of God, strength came. You better hear me. So number one, number one, it's a matter of alignment. Number two, it's a matter of adoration. Isaiah writes it in Isaiah 40. He says, now they that wait upon the Lord. Now we know that wait don't mean sitting around with your arms folded. But it's those who adore him, those who worship him, those who, he says, those are the one who renew their strength. God gives them the second wind. Now, now let me tell you something about second wind. Because see, when an athletes know this, they can be out there and uh, a runner, he's running and he reaches a point of exhaustion, almost like he's going to give out. But the body has been engineered by God based on condition, conditioning that they, they, get a, they get an extra surge of energy. They call it the second wind. Yeah. Well, 
Romans tells me I can know some spiritual things by looking at some natural things. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, on this race, God has a way of giving us a second win. I declare your second win yes, in yes, Jesus' sir. name. Yes, sir. And that is, and there are people who are about to give out. God says, this is the season for the second win. So I get strong. I get strong, number one, when I align myself. I get strong when I adore him. Watch this. I get strong through my affirmation. Now, Joel says it this way. The book of Joel says, let the weak say, oh, let the weak say I'm strong. Because there's something powerful about my word. So I could say that I'm tired. I could say that, uh, you know, I'm going to just say what it is. No, no, no. We call those things which be not as though they were. So I get strong by saying what the, what the word of God says. I'm strong in the Lord, the power of his might. My youth is being renewed as, as, as the eagle. I'm, I'm strong in the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, yes, no, yes, yes. Don't, yeah. don't stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am in I, 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 I'm going. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. Yeah. Point number one. Now, you know I'm a teacher. Yes, sir. I'm a teacher. So yes, point number one is through alignment. When I align myself with him, strength comes. Point number two, when I adore him, strength comes. Point number three, when I speak and affirm him, strength comes. Watch this. And then when I agree with others the bible says a threefold card is not easy it's not easily broken let me tell you something talk now see there's a story told of a particular tree that grows in the tropics and it's able to withstand cyclones and 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 typhoons and all that sort of thing so a study was done how is this group of trees able to stand uh, uh, withstand all of that and they did a study and they looked at the root system and they thought the root system that it went down deep and wrapped around rocks but they found the root system was very shallow so it puzzled them until they looked and saw that the root system of all of these trees because they grew in groves was intertwined so when the wind blew against one tree it blew against them all watch this, watch this. So, I'm here tonight to tell you, you are not in your fight by yourself. Why? Because our root system is intertwined. All of them, everybody out there who loves you, we're intertwined with you. You are not in this fight by yourself. You, you gonna get strength from us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm getting strong right now. I love, I love uh, when I heard Fred said that you gonna stand there and we gonna sing for you. Yeah. He said they gonna sing for you when you can. Why? Because we're, we're intertwined. Mm -hmm. Now can I close? Take your time. Take your time. Now, now, but, one. Oh, only if you close <laughs> like a Kojic preacher. A Kojic preacher has five closings. So use his close number one. Go. Close number one. Close number one. I get strong. Yes, sir. Number one, I get strong through alignment. alignment. Number two, I get strong through my adoration, my praise. Mm -hmm. Number three, I get strong because of my affirmation. I say it. Faith comes by hear, hearing, but it's released by the words of my mouth. Yes. I get strong by my agreement because we're intertwined in a twofold threefold course not easily broken my God. then I get strong by my actions watch this he says now when you walk through the fire I, I'm which when mm -hmm. you follow me here's what he's saying that when you take the step that's when I show up yeah. yes sir yes sir Yes, sir. That, that's when, yes, sir. Uh, see, see I, I, I call it trembling and trusting. And that is, I don't feel strong. I don't feel courageous. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bold. But once I make the step, he infuses me with his power. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I act like the word is so, I sing like it's so, I talk like it's so, I walk like it's so. And he must show up because that's his track record. Yes, sir. He showed up for Moses, he must show up for me. He showed up for Ezekiel, he must show up for me. He showed up for Joshua, he must show up for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I am drawing strength. It's, it's for me to sit and hear you. So that was close number one. Close number two. I'm, re I'm really serious because this time I want to make sure. When you say it's about your actions, I was telling them about how I sat at Potter's house on Sunday. Yes. Sir. And how Bishop spoke about the same thing you spoke about at, at Dr. Uh, B's uh, woman's meeting. And you got up and spoke about worship. Right. Worship. Worship. And I was just beginning the real problem with my throat. And I couldn't sing that night that was. I called Cece. But when you got to worship, we went into another place. And I don't even remember how you ended. Because we just started worship. Cece got on her knees. And when she got on her knees, she reached over with her hand and just laid her hands on my throat and just, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, heal, 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 heal. And that brought me back. Same thing happened on Sunday. Bishop was in the middle of preaching about we know not. And all of a sudden, he switched, started talking about worship. And when he started talking about worship, he started speaking in tongues and saying, you know, raise your voice, lift up your voice. And I had none. But because I was worshiping, and I started mouthing and started pushing, and all of a sudden something opened up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was able yeah. to make noise, and then make a job, and then I could carry a note, and I could use my vibrato. And the more I did it, the more it came. I'm going to sing at the end of this, this, this show. I'm going to sing at the end of this show. But, but that, that, that's key. What you talked that night about worship was so key. Talk to me. Close to well, you already closed for me. No, 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 no. I just set up. I set it up so you can knock it down. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, how am I going to talk about worship with, with one of the greatest worship leaders in the body of Christ? <laughs> easy. <laughs> Quite easy. Because it's, it's, it's by the, the generals like you that take the time to teach people like me. I, I, am, I am an older man to some, but I am a younger man to you, and I don't mind sitting at the feet of generals. And I ain't saying none of this for clarity. I'm, I'm not saying this for light camera or action. I take great value in what you speak and how you have given the word that brings us to a greater place of doing. You said it demands action. And that means that I've got to, if I say I'm healed, and if I say I believe, I've oh. got to take this walk with him. Got to. And got I've to. got to step out knowing that if I step out, I obligate him. My faith to cause me to step out obligates God. And God says, that's all I wanted you to that's do, it. son. That's it. That's now it. Now watch me work. That, that, that's, that's it. That's all the, it was the same thing with Moses. Moses, you got a Red Sea in front of you. You got the Jordan, you got the Mount Sinai to the right of you, you got the desert to the left of you, yeah. and you got the Egyptians behind you. They're closing in, boy. Now, I know there are three million of you and only a couple of hundred thousand of them, but you're afraid because of all these years of inculcated fear. Yeah. And you think that you're going to, these people think they're going to perish here. He says, Moses, Moses tells them, they said, Moses, why did you bring us into the wilderness to perish? Mm -hmm. We weren't there enough graves in Egypt? Moses gives a great swelling. Come on and preach, God. Swelling soliloquy. <laughs> he says, stand still, be quiet, calm your fears. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show to you this day. For the Egyptians that you see before you today, you shall see them again no more forever. For the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Yeah. But then, see, everybody's praising about that. Uh huh. But the next verse, yeah. He turns to God and says, What shall I do? And God makes this statement that messed me up. Instead of God saying, I got you, boy, He said, why criest thou unto me? Talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, y'all y'all didn't praise him over that one. Yeah. God looks at a man who's facing death with millions of Hebrews and they're about to be slaughtered. Yes. They can't get past the sea. They can't run over the mountains. They'll die in the desert. He gives a great swelling word. Watch God work. And then God looks at him and says, that was nice what you said. All right. But why are you crying to me? What did I teach you? 
What did I give you? Yeah, come on. What's in your hand, boy? What's in your hand? What's in your hand? What's in your hand? What's in, your hand? And if, in other words, if you don't move, I'm not moving. That messed me up. So when you just said that it demands action. Action. God is saying, I am the God that can deliver, but I won't move if your faith doesn't move you. That's it. And, yeah. and, and, and until Moses, here's God, and he looks at his hand. Yeah. He said, God said, stretch it out. What I, told, what I showed you in the mountain will work in the desert. Stretch it out. And he stretches out his rod. And God rolls up his sleeve and says, now watch me work. Oh, God. Bishop. No, you, 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 you got that. Because, because that, that last point that you made, that last point that you made is the thing that clicked in my head. Mm -hmm. It clicked in my head. That's it. Step out. You have to. S sing. Step out. The very thing that they say you cannot do, step out. You have to. Because the doctors only practice medicine. They're still practicing medicine because this human body is so complex because of the grand design of God. Because we are fearfully and wonderfully made yeah. so much that medicine cannot discern what's going on in this body without supernatural intervention. The facts and the truth. I'm sorry, Bishop. No. The facts and the truth. The facts is they've done all they could do. But the truth is... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, take, take, take it, Bishop. Take it. Take it. Because I, I, I feel like, you know, I, I'm still sitting at your feet. Take it, take it, take it. You, you're doing a marvelous job. Bishop. You, you know, you're doing a marvelous job. I, I think I'm preaching my own deliverance. You are. And you are. You are. I hope that I hope everybody that's watching really paid attention to those five points. I hope that you paid attention to the alignment. I hope you paid attention to everything the bishop said, because there's a there, there's a portion that we've got to do that God that's will it. not do. That's it. I was sitting there, and when my church was very small, I was upset with God. I thought maybe He had been fair with me, and I was upset, and I was sitting there waiting on God, mm -hmm. and God let me know He was waiting on me. Yeah. I, I read Joshua 1 and 8, and God spoke to me. There in my, I call it my little five-by-five five office closet. That, it was a closet that was converted to an office. Wow. Big enough for a half a desk, my chair, and if you want to talk to me, you had to stand outside the door. <laughs> and God spoke to me as I read uh, Joshua 1 and 8 and said, son, I'm yes. waiting on you. I'm not been unfair. I've, been, I've not been unfair, but I'm waiting on you. See, God, though he sees need, and cares about need does not move based on need. <laughs> a lot of folk can't like to hear that. You see, if God moved based on need, there would be no need. Exactly. Teach, Bishop. He moves based on our faith. Teach. That's how he moves. Yes, sir. And, and, and when we demonstrate faith, and, uh, and when we demonstrate faith, that's that action. Mm -hmm. He saw, the Bible says, when those four men came and uh, they didn't quit. Because there was a crowd at the door. They had their brother, their, their friend, they were trying to bring to Jesus. And they could have given up. They yeah. could have said, well, we tried to get you in here, but you can see all the church folk, they wouldn't move and we couldn't get in here. So we did our part. Don't you get upset. We'll, do, we'll drop you right here. But, you know, <laughs> but, 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 but they persevered. See, they didn't quit. And that's what I see so many believers. They say faith don't work because they quit. They quit too soon. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like quitting? Yes. Yeah. People ask me, you know, I'm a, you know I've, been, I've been pastoring our church is 30 years old. Good. They asked me, because we started with, you know, I, I made a grand statement one, one year, uh, well, 30 years ago on a Labor Day weekend. I had about 300 members. I told them what God called me to do, lay hands on the sick, speak in tongues, cast out devils, teach the word. The next Sunday, only 23 folks showed up. <laughs> I lost 92% of my members in one day, one week. But I didn't quit. Did I feel like quitting? Yes. Have I felt like quitting along the journey? Yes. But I understand this is a fixed fight. My God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We win. All we got to do is keep showing up for the next round. I taught my church this, Doc. I taught my church this. 
that when you go to the fight, the fight game, the, 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 the guy in the corner, the, 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 the you know, the, the coach, uh, the yeah. trainer, yeah, yeah, he, he's in the corner. He's got this towel over his, over his shoulder. Now, the towel has a whole lot of meaning because if he checks his fighter out and his fighter doesn't look like he can make it, he just takes the towel and throws it in, the fight's over. You got it? But he can take that same towel and wipe the sweat off the fighter. Give him some encouragement. Put him in for the next round. I told my church, every believer has to learn to do this. When you feel like quitting, you take your towel, you throw it up in the air. Now that traumatizes the devil because he thinks you're going to quit. But you catch the towel, wipe the sweat off your brow, throw it over your shoulder, and tell him, come on. So, so, Daddy, when you feel like quitting, Overwhelmed right now. I am absolutely overwhelmed. Um, I, 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 I can't thank God enough for you, Bishop. I can't thank God. I can't thank God enough for you. And I, I'm, I'm, I am so serious. I'm not. I'm not one who gives platitudes to Bill Smith. But I'm telling you right now, this this night has breathed so much life into me. This has brought me to a place of receiving. Because I've never had a report that was this, 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 this severe. But this, this right here, y'all, this is the real deal. I'm sorry. This, this, this is the real deal. Could you lead, could you lead those who are watching that, that may have been inspired through this in, in a prayer of, 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 of real transformation? Anyone who may want to give their life to Jesus or anyone who may be struggling with their... Uh, past spiritual and religious beliefs being challenged today. And the response, because what you did is you put the responsibility on man, because God has already done his job. And a lot of people, you know, I've always put it on God. You know, God is going to do this. He's going to put food on my table. He's going to put clothes on my back, and I'm going to sit here till he do. And you're going to be naked and hungry. Unless you use your faith. Right. So, uh, but there, there's, a, there's a lot of people who are still sitting in that, that way of thought that causes them to, to be non-productive. And, they, and they're satisfied in it. So if, if, if you could speak to that. Well, I, I think, you know, uh, it's, this has been a good program today. Uh, the young man who came home before me was, I mean, he was right on point. He was right on point. Yeah. And that is, you have to make, you have to, you have, it's, he says, his, like his book it starts with you. Yeah. You have to decide that you're going to have God's best. And Jesus died to give it to you. All you've got to do is be willing to receive it. And it's so simple. That's what I said. It is not difficult. A lot of people say, well, I'm still working on some things. And as soon as I get myself straight, I'm going to come to God. Well, if you could, live, you could straighten yourself out without him, you wouldn't need him. But he asked us to come just like we are. If you repeat this prayer, listen, you'll step into a whole nother realm. And then there are those of you, after we pray, pray this prayer, we're going to have this confession that we're going to make that God would open up your ears and your eyes and your understanding so that you can walk in the full light of his word. Repeat after me, dear God, dear God I know without Jesus I'm lost. I believe your word. If I ask you to save me, to come into my heart, you will. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and was raised from the dead to validate everything you said. I receive you now as my Savior and Lord. I turn my back on my old way of living. Now fill me with your spirit and power so I can live a life pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Father, for saving me and placing me in your family. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. 
Not on my way, man. Before you leave. Before, before you leave. Man, I, I feel like we've got our own television show going in here. Before, before you leave, tell me about the conference. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. We have a conference every year. I think you came one year. Yeah. Yeah. We have a conference every year for uh, the body of Christ. Uh, uh, I was in Dallas years ago, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, 20 years ago, God spoke to me. Our church was very small. He said, I'm going to raise your ministry up. People come from far and near to learn success principles and uh, church growth principles. And 10 years later, you know, I started uh, our church growth conference. Mm -hmm. And thousands come. It's for pastors, but it's for the body of Christ. It's going to be sept October the 21st through the 24th. Mm -hmm. And I'm inviting every pastor to come. Pastor, you know, you get to, I, I, we're very transparent, you know where I am. Yes, sir. I get to show you what we do at the light, how we do it. I give you everything that you need in order uh, for you to uh, get the results. And that's what we're talking about this year, getting results. But it's not just for pastors. Now, pastors do come, and I thank God for it. But God told me, my church is more than just pastors and leaders. It's the body of Christ. What we do is we show you, I'm a teacher, and we will show you how to have a strategy to transform your life, put your life on the right track. I want you to come. So pastors, female pastors, male pastors, white pastors, black pastors, green pastors, everybody <laughs> is welcome. Now, but you, you, have, you, have this, you have this real passion for pastors. You have a real passion to heal pastors, to teach pastors. You know, you, you, don't, you don't lord over them or govern over them, but you want to empower pastors. And, and that's really key because there's a lot of pastors that are hurting and they just need a moment to be able to heal. That, that's something that God gave you. Well, God gave it to me because I was there one day. Mm -hmm. I, I was hurt. I, I, was, I was down. And another pastor, he picked, he, he, I, I tell him, he, he caught me when I was falling. I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. C.L. Jackson, mm -hmm. Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. My God. And, um, um, and, and one day I asked him, Pastor, what do I owe you? You know, after he had uh, he saved my ministry, saved my marriage, and, and, and I asked him, what do I owe you? He said, I want you to do for the next fellow what I've done for you. Yeah. And so uh, um, I, I, can, I, I, I can never repay him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I can't. So, so what I do is I do for others what he has done for me. Mm -hmm. He was an ear. He, was, he gave me a, a listening ear when I needed it. He gave me wisdom when I need it. Uh, he gave me strategies when I need it. And that's what I do. And, and, and God assigned this to me. So it's not something I, I do because it's popular. Mm -hmm. He assigned me. He told me, I am going to raise your church up. And when he told me that at that church here in Dallas, Texas, years ago, my church wasn't, wasn't prosperous at all. It wasn't, it was, I couldn't get a crowd on Sunday. I mean, on, on Easter Sunday. <laughs> no, you could, throw, you could throw a rock on Easter Sunday and not hit anybody. That's how bad my... Look, I was at the conference because this pastor, C.L. Jackson, he paid my way. Yeah. He bought my plane ticket. He paid for the hotel. Wow. Wow. And he had to give me spending change. That's how broke I was. Mm -hmm. But I sat down and I heard God. Now, God told me what he, would, what he would do at my conference, that he would create, we would create an environment where people could hear from him. And that's the amazing thing that makes the conference so different. You'll be able to hear the voice of God. I tell the pastor, you will sit there and you will hear God's voice. That's an anointing that comes into place that's, that's, uh, that you can't fabricate. And you know it's genuine. And so uh, I'll give the date again. October the uh, 21st through the, uh, through the 24th. And God told me to do it a special, unique way. In Houston. In Houston, Texas, New Light Church. Oh, the, I, the website is uh, newlight.org or strategiesnlc.com. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my wife and I, we do the teaching. Yes. That's it. And it's, it's, it's a different type of conference. We call it the conference like no other. And it, and it is. <laughs> and Dr. B is a phenomenal teacher. Oh, yeah. And so are your daughters. It's yes. amazing to me. You know, I'm, uh, uh, you talk about, you know, you got to do for others. What was done for you? There, there's this group in, in, in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and uh, the, the Shelbys. Uh, uh, they're from 16 to 22 years old. The singingest people you ever want to hear. Uh -huh. I'm going to make sure that they're heard. Uh, um, it's Andrea, Courtney, Amber, Trent, and, and Don, the third. And, and I want to do for them what was done for me. Yes. When you hear them, they're second to none. Right. But that's what you're doing for me. You are, you're, you're, you're allowing me to say, because when I, when I went, and I saw how you did things. And I sat and listened to how you taught. I was like, Jesus, 
I'm going to do this in church. And I went and I, re I revamped the whole church. I revamped how we did things. Because my thing is, if, if, if it works for you, it's right. got to work for me. That's the question. Did you get results? Yes, sir. That's, that's yes, what I sir. say. I say to people, the pastors, I, I, what I will give you will cause you to have results. Yes, sir. Why? I'm anointed to do it. I don't say that with, with trying to be a braggadocious person. Mm -hmm. This is my assignment. I reach out to pastors all the time. And uh, you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. That's it. That's you it. Know, and, and, and we freely give it. That's mm -hmm. it. Now, there's a registration fee and that sort of thing, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's very economical. It's for what you get. Compared to what you, you get. Know. Oh, my God. And so, uh, I, like I said, again, pastors, I, I tell pastors, follow your heart. If there's a witness in your heart to come to our conference. I want you to come. You're going to be amazed at what God does in your life when you come. Brothers and sisters, give God praise for the ministry. Yeah.